The first time I met Catherine was unremarkable. She was a Running Start high school student in my survey of biology class. A good student, academically strong, came to class, turned in assignments, earned a good grade, and she was gone. Then a year later, she was back. She'd enrolled in another one of my courses her first year of college, but this time was different. This time, she came in with a mission. She was routinely one of the last people to leave at the end of the night, and she started making a habit of coming by my office hours. Sometimes she wanted to talk about course content, but other times she just let me know what she was thinking. She asked what it was like to study science, and we talked about her faith, family, struggles, stresses. I learned a lot about Catherine. I was surprised to find it wasn't just me that she was connecting to this way. She was a part of so many other projects and clubs, the student senate, even a band. And she'd been reaching out and building relationships with other faculty too. But by the end of that second term, I was on Team Catherine, ready to champion her successes and cheer her into her future. So why am I telling you about Catherine? Well, the thing is, I think she has a skill that a lot of youth don't realize is important until maybe they struggle to get into their first year of work. And, I, and in, in my professional role, I leverage a similar skill as an intermediary for many community efforts and cultivate a community connective tissue, a network. And I've spent a considerable amount of time thinking about students like Catherine and her connectional intelligence and about something called social capital. Social capital is a term that describes the value of the network of relationships between people in a community who live and work together. And a student's social capital is in many ways an unseen or maybe unappreciated endowment that we send them out the door with to find a future career. And there are ways of building social capital and maintaining it. And there are also, unfortunately, counterfeit currencies that can strangle the potential to grow social capital, too. But here's the thing. We don't talk about it. We want to help youth launch into their futures, but it is not going to be enough to tell them to build a network, ask them for a letter of reference, or help them build an online profile to get them ready for careers. We're gonna need to help youth see and value relationships and connections and how to build them. So I'm on a mission to arm youth with relationships, connections, and resources so that every single one feels valuable, needed, supported, and empowered to achieve their fullest potential. Are you with me? Good. As I have five changes I want to encourage you to consider. And the first is this. We need to teach youth to anticipate the need for social capital earlier. We wait until the last minute to make this a priority. When we ask them for letters of reference, for a first job or a college application, Every spring, I have dozens of youth show up at my door wondering if I would write one of those letters of reference. They shyly ask from the doorway or in an awkward email. And they are trying to make that connection happen. They're trying to build social capital because they've just realized they need it. And I would love to help them, but what can I write? I don't always know that much about that student in the doorway. And shame on us, we've had years to tell them about the importance of building those relationships with their teachers, peers, community leaders, and congregations, but we wait until they are almost out the door and then ask them to show us proof. We could start this so much earlier and help arm youth with some connectional skills that will leave them with those relationships there when they need them. Last fall, I had an opportunity to visit a third grade classroom for an observation. I came into a familiar scene. This teacher was seated at the front of her class and her students on the floor in front of her. The lesson that they were working on was about the math that they were extracting from their story, which I loved. But that wasn't what caught my attention. It was the way that they were dialoguing about it. 
this teacher had been working with her students on a community conversation procedure. So when she asked a question, the first student, Juan, he offered a response, and then Juan chose another student, Sam. And Sam said, yeah, I want to add on to what Juan was saying. <laughs> I agree, and I noticed that, yeah, my jaw hit the floor. <laughs> and then Juan called on Sarah, and Sarah said, well, I see where Juan and Sam are coming from, but I am wondering about and added her thoughts and called on Alex, the fourth student. One by one, these students, they looked at each other. They called on each other by name. They validated each other's thoughts and opinions. And right before my eyes, they are building social capital. And I thought, this, this is what a foundational connectional intelligence looks like and we can make that happen. Two, we need to make social capital an integral part. Uh, sorry. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> we need to make social capital an explicit part of our decision-making process. Without meaning to, we can sometimes make choices that can impact a student's ability to build social capital and connections. Will you have a summer job? Will you join a club or a team or a youth group? Where will you go to college? How will you attend? Are you gonna be on campus or are you gonna be online? Because there are trade-offs for these choices. And we tell students to choose colleges based on programs. And I don't wanna gloss past many important points to consider when choosing how and where to do your education. But we don't even mention that college is about more than content. This is your first opportunity to build a professional network. These professional relationships with your peers and your teachers. Consider this, Paul Allen and Bill Gates, they were classmates. Bill Hewlett and Dave Packard, they were classmates. Two of my personal favorites, Ben Cohen and Jerry Greenfield, they were classmates with a pretty sweet future. Right? Finding a program that aligns with your passion is incredible. But if you play your opportunity of education the right way, you should graduate with a network of peers in the field that you want to have that career in. And students, they should be able to consider this when making those choices. Third, we need to make social capital building an explicit part of career-connected learning. First, we need to stop telling you that there are only two categories on a resume. Their education is gonna be a what, and their skills are gonna be a how, but we haven't even mentioned to them the who, and it turns out the who has the greatest impact on our career trajectories. When polled, 46% of people will say they have the job they currently have because of a social connection. So we use relationships to get there, but we don't help our kids build those professional relationships. We have opportunities through career-connected learning experiences to get youth work experiences and build foundational relationships. But not all career-connected learning experiences are equal. This means that an internship where a student pushes a broom or gets coffee isn't as valuable to her as one that pairs her with a mentor, encourages her to attend the morning meetings. She needs to have opportunities to build those relationships, those professional relationships. But we could start this earlier too. Who can we introduce our younger students to? Maybe we can invite professionals in, or maybe we're lucky enough to be headed on a field trip. How do we make sure that our students don't just see interesting concepts and hear about potential jobs? Because connecting students to careers in learning is critically important. But career-connected learning experiences are most impactful, influential, when students have opportunities to connect with the professionals in those fields. So when we have an opportunity to take our youth out into the world, our best practice should be to not only ask ourselves, what will they see, but also, who will they meet? Four, as educators, we need to be willing to be at the center 
of that student's startup capital, startup network, let's say. Because they are learning more from us than the content and the standards that we set out to help them master. Many good educators know this. John Hattie, renowned educational expert, has done meta-analysis on the types of factors that have the greatest impact on student learning. And the good news is, is that Hattie reports that one of the factors that has the greatest impact on student learning is relationships with their teachers. So we need to give educators those opportunities to build connections and relationships with their students. And educators, the content is important, but that relationship to your students will help them build success academically as well. It's not wasted time. It's part of your job. It's part of our job. The good news is that students are already taking your advice. A Gallup poll last year reported that 56% of youth said that they used advice that they gathered from their teachers, peers, community leaders, family members, when deciding what field to pursue and what to study in school. They are going to aspire to be what they see and know. And right now, what they see and know is you. You are already a part of that startup capital. So in that role, how valuable will you be? Because we need to help them grow connections to grow their opportunities so you can help them at the center make those new connections. Last one. We need to teach youth to be able to examine and evaluate their connections. Because as important as it is for youth to be able to build authentic relationships and connections, they also need to be able to identify the pseudo connections. Because there is a difference between the social media connections and the social capital that I'm talking about today. Right? The lure of that counterfeit, it comes by way of likes, clicks, views, followers. But when we do a little bit of checking for authenticity, the social capital that we want to help our youth build is going to be something that they've worked hard for and something that they can take and cash in. Who among their followers can they ask for an opinion that challenges their own? Because in our digital age, it's really easy to feel connected. But the algorithms that control the feeds that we're scrolling, they are programmed to find ideas that you can relate to. So it is dangerously easy to find an echo chamber for our own narrow lens. That makes this fifth consideration not so easy for us either. We are going to have to help them diversify their network and diversify their base. How? We're going to have to model it. We're going to have to diversify our base and make new connections as well. But the good news is, is that we are more creative, more innovative, more resilient, more productive when we draw on diversity in our personal networks. But making those connections can be tough. And most folks, they need help making this happen. But consider this. In the human brain, a single neuron never physically connects with another neuron. Yet we are able to orchestrate complex thoughts, conjure memories and images, imagine futures as a system, and two seemingly unrelated neurons can form a connection. Because at the molecular level, there are spaces between cells called synapses. And these synapses, they are rich with activity. There are enzymes and catalysts that form the medium for connection and proteins that scaffold away to send messages between neighboring cells. This whole structure is dynamic and always changing as we learn and grow and connect new circuits. And there are people and structures in our communities that function in this same way. People like my student Catherine or my friend Lisa I have yet to have a coffee with Lisa when she hasn't said something like, oh my goodness, you need to meet this person. You would have so much in common, right? There are these people that are, have a natural gift, a connectional intelligence. 
and thriving communities have invested in the people and structures that can build this type of connective tissue. So we can use these structures and help our youth harness their ability to build connections in the synapses. Because I believe, truly, if we are willing to start early, if we are willing to help students make new connections and see and value those connections, help introduce them to new people, be that first synaptic structure, that first connector for them, and intentionally help them to meet and diversify their base. Together, we will empower youth to achieve their fullest potential. Thank you.